citizens of the 2nd and 9th District and surrounding areas for the next 50 plus years. Uh, Vice President Mike Roberts, over here. Okay. Treasurer Mike Stribner. Secretary Steve King. Chief Lynn Redtop Henderson. Assistant EMS Chief Carol Bohm. <laughs> Assistant Fire Chief Ben Windsor. Assi uh, Deputy Chief Dylan Walker. Also, I'd like to introduce the president of our auxiliary, Robin Dove. President of the Auxiliary, Janie Stahl. It is with my pleasure to introduce some of the dignitaries of St. Mary's County. Today we have County Commissioner President Randy Guy, Commissioner Eric Colvin, Commissioner Mike Hewitt, <laughs> Commissioner Todd Morgan. Thank you all for being here. It is my great privilege to introduce some of the very special key players that made this facility possible. First, I want Great Mills Trade and Post President Bubby Knott. The other Mr. Randy Guy, Vice President of Greg Mills Trading Post. I don't know if he's here or not. Yeah, yeah here he is. Here he is. Sorry, Randy. Miss Teresa Del Nino. She's with McGinnis Del Nino Architects. And also Zyra Sorez. Okay. 
and also Mr. Chris Bologna from CSBI Services. He was our owner of Rex. Chris here? Okay, not yet. Okay. Also, I would like to introduce Mr. Ernie Williams in the back, Senior Lender, and Miss Aaron Birch, Commercial Loan Lender of the Community Bank of the Chesapeake. Now it is my best time ever. I want to introduce the building committee. This project would not have been possible without these dedicated fine folks and all of the many, many hours that they put in in this project. Miss <laughs> Kathy Calder, chairperson. Mr. Gregory Adams. Mr. Danny Brown. Miss Georgia Wheeler. Mr. J.P. Calder. And Miss Stephanie Boyd. and the late Fuzzy Knox. I would also like to thank and say a very special thank you to the following guests. Miss Linda Dean. Mr. and Mrs. Keith and Bernice Fairfax. Mr. Roy Dyson. And this Diane Little. Thank you so much for your support. At this time, I would like to turn things over to Vice President Mike Roberts for some company history and remarks. Thank you, Mr. President. What a beautiful day, huh? Yeah. Southern Maryland finally pumped in some of that uh, warm spring weather that we're so fond of instead of it being winter time like it was last week. <laughs> what a beautiful day, and also a very exciting day and a proud day for those of us here at the Second District Volunteer Fire Department and Rescue Squad. Uh, as the President announced, as we formally unveil and bless our new fire EMS station, to our state and county officials, to our brother and sister, uh, first responders around the region, as well, and most important, to the citizens we serve. My job today is to give you a little history about where we come from in this organization. And that started about 71 years ago, April 1st, 1951, in a small community a couple miles from here, if you drive but if uh, the crow flies, it's about a mile from here on the other side of Herring Creek called McKay's Beach. And in 1951, those concerned citizens got together and started the McKay's Beach Volunteer Fire Department. And that was the start of our organization. And with good sound business practices, tight pockets, okay, good leadership, the fledgling organization took off and began to prosper. And they were there for a few years. Around 1959, they changed the name from the Kays Beach Volunteer Fire Department to the Second District Volunteer Fire Department, but they were still at that same location. But around that time frame, they realized, just like we realized 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that we might have to move and they started looking for a more centralized location to build a bigger and more efficient station. So in 1961, the Second District Volunteer Fire Department moved from the Kays Beach up here to our older station. And we stayed in that station for 61 years and we grew. 
the apparatus got bigger, the membership got bigger, the ambulances got bigger, the calls got, the call volume grew. Okay, a lot of things happened. And I guess around 1973, one of the major things that happened with the Second District Volunteer Fire Department was the rescue squad was formed. We started the rescue squad. And then it became the Second District Volunteer Fire Department and Rescue Squad. And we still are the only organization in St. Mary's County that has both fire and emergency medical services under the same roof. All of your other rescue squads and fire departments are separate entities. And right about that time, because of that, since we had a whole new bailiwick to take care of, we added on to the older fire station to make room for the uh, emergency medical services apparatus and the activities that they would need to follow through with. Over the years, we continued to grow. Even back then in the early 70s, our leadership realized that someday we would have to expand and get bigger. And throughout those years, uh, small parcels of land around in this area were bought by the fire department and rescue squad which allowed us to converge everything together for this new station so about 20 years ago thinking right around the turn of the century we really started to realize that we were all jammed up and we were going to have to think about um, expanding something maybe bigger or at least expanding to what we had. So after about seven additions in 2013, that new building committee that President Swan um, gave you the members that are on that committee, that were on that committee, in 2013 they got together and started to seriously begin trying to visualize and figure out what we might want. But in order to make sure that we were on the right track, we even had a third person company, uh, Huber Brewer Construction out of Syracuse, New York. We had them do a uh, feasibility study to see if we were really on the right track. Did we really need to build a new building or could we just expand? And that study supported the fact that we did need a, a larger and a more efficient station. So now the big question comes up, should we renovate and add on to the old one or should we build a new one? We've got all this land now, we've got the room to do it, but can we do it? Brought up a lot of questions. So in October of 2016, we put that question to the membership. We said, what do you want to do? We can renovate this building, stay in it, make it bigger, maybe make it better, or we can build a new station. And the membership voted to build a new station. So right after that, I think it was November of 2016, we uh, engaged with McGinnis and Del Nino Architects out of Alexandria. And one of the things that Blair didn't mention when he talked about their lead architect and um, Principal Teresa Fiorino is she also has a home down here a couple miles down the road so she's kind of a stakeholder here she's almost like family after all the time that we spent together now we haven't taught her the secret handshake or given her the code word yet but she's getting pretty close okay so the architects went to work and their main focus on the design of the new station centered on the health, the safety, and the well-being of the first responders who would be here while they were in a response mode or running a duty shift or whatever. Okay. Now, Ms. Downino also had the wisdom and the vision to bring in somebody else to help us with some of the decisions. She brought in an architect from another architectural firm named Ken Newell and Ken Newell's purpose was this he specialized 
He specialized in designing fire and emergency stations. And at the time, he had designed over 200 fire and emergency medical stations throughout the country. So if you wanted to know anything about what you needed, this guy was the guy to go to. Okay? And a lot of the features that you see in this new station today were because of Ken's wisdom. All right? We also realized around 2015 that we were going to need some additional funding. So in 2017, we really started lobbying the county commissioners to raise our fire tax. Now, taxation is never a popular thing with citizens and especially with politicians. But we needed that additional funding, not only for this new building, but because prices were going up, Okay, cost was going up everywhere, our, our call volume increased, okay? But it's important for me to point out here, I think, for those of you that are citizens here, that at that time, in 2017, the second district volunteer fire department had not asked or requested the county commissioners to raise the fire tax in the second and ninth district for almost 18 years, since 2000, okay? nor had we ever asked for an increase in the emergency medical services or rescue tax for 13 years or since its inception in 2005. So after many public forums, okay, other meetings, sometimes brawls, no, not really, uh, the county commissioners, and I think it was May of 2018, uh, allowed us to, or, brought our fire tax level back up, okay? So we thank the commissioners for their support of that endeavor, okay? We especially want to thank former county commissioner, Tom Jarbo, who was a commissioner then. I don't think, is Tom here today? Okay. But he stood by us unwaveringly uh, the whole time okay, and gave us that support. So today, is the culmination of seven years of planning and hard work even before the construction began. Research, vision, boat forecasting, sometimes just plain exhausting work and it wasn't always easy. You've already heard about Greg Adams being on the uh, building committee but past president, past chief Greg Adams also headed up the committee to figure out how we were going to finance this endeavor. He and Diane Little, our bookkeeper, and our current treasurer, Mike Scribner, they put the plan together. They worked and put the plan together and presented it to the membership so that we were sure that we would be able to do this and still maintain an operating budget. Okay. We also had that plan scrutinized by some other third party uh, financial professionals just to make sure we were all on the right page. Okay. And then there's somebody else that we can't forget. The new building fundraising committee was chaired by Dee Dee Johnson. Where's Dee Dee? There you go. And her members were Stephanie Boyd, Kathy Calder, Dan Brown, seems like a, a record, replaying a record, doesn't it? But also Georgia Wheeler from the auxiliary, Darlene Johnson, Jim Rodriguez, and again, the late Buzzy Knott, whose heart and soul was into this, as well as the late Mike Johnson. They all put their heads together and they came up with some innovative projects and some events in order to raise additional funding for the department, and they continue to do that today. A wonderful auxiliary, our wonderful auxiliary, current President Robin Dove, who President Swan already announced, uh, continues to support us throughout the endeavor and raise funding. So now we're down to the, to the final race here. In 2020, we, we selected Great Mills Trading Post as the general contractor. Blair already mentioned Randy Guy, but I'm here to tell you, 
uh, that was the best company that anybody could work with to try to get a, a project this size done. They were always there to help. Randy, was, every day he was the site superintendent. And if you wanted something done, if you needed something, he was the guy to go to. He would get it done for you. So thank you, Randy, for all your efforts, sir. Chris Bologna. Chris, are you here? There you are. Chris. Chris uh, was our owner's representative. He runs uh, CSBI uh, services, and he was uh, detrimental to helping us out. I mean, none of us knew all of the hoops we'd have to jump through and uh, things we'd have to jump over, but Chris kept us straight kept everybody else straight pretty much at the same time. So thank you, Chris, for all of your effort. <laughs> Many of you remember this. Construction began on July 30th, 2020, with all the earth movement that was going on around here. And we had a formal groundbreaking on July 31st. <coughs> and so here we stand today, nine years later from the beginning of when the building committee started, started working on this. Nine years later, with about a year and a half worth of construction, um, a state-of-the-art fire and emergency medical services station, as Blair said, to serve the citizens for well over 50, 60 years. Okay? All the blood, the sweat, the tears, the yelling, and yeah, a little bit of swearing from time to time, it was all worth it. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone who assisted us in any way thank you to all of those that supported us whether it was either financially or just um, emotionally with us you were with us you encouraged us thank you thank you to everyone thank you to all the membership who assisted to make this day and, and all the other days that we have here at the second district good our dreams have come true and we look forward to continuing to serve the citizens of the 2nd and 9th District and as well as the rest of St. Mary's County when we need to. And we will always strive to be the best that we can be at all times. Thank you very much. Okay, at this time, I'd like to call up Reverend Joseph S. Statesman of St. Mark U-A-M-E Church right here in Valley Lee for the blessing of our building. Jeff, Mr. Joe. Shall we consecrate our heart as we bow our heads in prayer? O oh God, our Father, the creator and the sustainer of all the heaven and all the earth, we come today with thankful hearts on behalf of the 2nd District Volunteer Fire Department and Rescue Squad. We thank you, O oh God, for your faithfulness. 71 years ago, you saw the need for a volunteer fire department to meet the need of the people in the 2nd and the 9th District of this county. The love for your people in the two districts on April the 1st, 1951, you started this volunteer fire department. In October 1952, you brought about the letter jury to assist the Father Father. This you did, O oh God, for your faithful members who are gone, who gave their time and talent unselfishly. Now they are with you, O oh God, up there in heaven. When they left, 
they pass the baton to the next generation to continue on with this good work. This we do say thank you. As time went on, progress continued to grow. The need for a larger building was needed. Through praying and careful planning, in November 1965, the second building of the Volunteer Fund was dedicated, which we do say thank you. The second building was used for 57 years. And progress did not stop there, but continued to grow. On this day, on this day, the 24th day of April, 2022, we give you all, oh God, all the thanks for the third building of the second district volunteer fire department and rescue squad. Realize that only through you and you only, oh God, oh wow, we all are here today. No other reason. So as this building is dedicated, we ask special blessings upon these faithful men and women who are now serving they will willing to accept the responsibility and gladly receive the baton to carry on that which was started 71 years ago by those you used at that time. As these men and women who are serving now go on every fire call and every ambulance call, we ask you, O oh God, to let them feel your presence there with them. That they will know without a doubt that you are with them. O oh God, there, because you promised in your word that you will never leave or forsake us. So we thank you for that great promise, knowing that whatever you promise, you also deliver. So on this day, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. All that you have done and is now doing and will do with this volunteer for the prophet and rest of God in the future to come. We ask that your blessings will continue to grow upon this apartment many, many years to follow. This we do ask in the magnificent name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Okay, at this time, I'd like to uh, have the county commissioners come up for a few words. I think Eric wants to do a little talking. Well, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the county commissioners, thank you for being here. This is incredible. Just such a wonderful day. And it's great to see the community out here. So I was thinking about what this means, what we're doing here for this ribbon cutting, and it really boils down to three things in my mind. First, the vision. You all had a vision. It's, it would have been, I shouldn't say that, there may have been easier paths to take, there may have been easier visions to have, but they would not have been the right vision. They would not have been the correct thing to do. You all had the vision for the future. Second, you had the endurance, you had the grit, you had the fortitude to follow through on that vision to make this happen. That's not easy. There was difficult times. But you made this happen, and you have an incredible building to show for it. Third, faith, hope, trust in the future. That's what this is about. This building represents 
a department that is looking to the community, that knows the needs of the community and is ready to serve those needs this year and 50 years into the future. And that's what's incredible about this day. This is forward looking 50 plus years and that's what's needed. So I just want to say thank you to all of you who made this possible. This is just an absolutely outstanding day and it's, we're, we're grateful to be able to be here and be with you to celebrate this. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we're going to have a ribbon cutting, and I'd like to have the following people come up and be part of the holding of the ribbon. So, the County Commissioner Randy Guy, Eric Colvin, Mike Hewitt, Todd Morgan, the Building Committee, Miss Kathy Calder, Mr. Gregory Adams, J.P. Calder, Dan Brown, support for our department. A big thank you to all the past executive members and board of director members and also the membership for supporting this project over the years. I would also like to thank the ribbon cutting committee for organizing this special event. Without them this wouldn't have happened. We have Brandy Nelson, Joel Stauffer, Cindy Bowes, and Robin Dove. Dove. What a great job they did. Thanks again. I also would like to thank Chief Lynn Henderson and all of his officers and all of the members who helped move the equipment, the supplies, and other essential things from the old building over to the new building. That was a lot of hard work and a lot of planning. The station looks great. Okay, we'd like everybody to sign up for the tours and we're gonna direct you in front of the tower to my right, your left. So, uh, and we're gonna have uh, a sign up list and we'll give you maybe five or ten to a group and they will walk you around the station. Also, we have face painting in the bays for the kids. A fire prevention table set up with a lot of good information on it. A recruitment table set up. So if anybody wants to join this fantastic organization, take an application and we'd love to have you. Also, out front, check out the bricks, the donation bricks. Uh, all of them are not in. We have about 55 that we have to put, put in. We weren't able to install them over the winter because they told us not to put them in in freezing weather. So they will be in very shortly. If you'd like to see your brick that you'll... Thank you very much for all your hard work and dedication. And take a look at all the apparatus and equipment out in front that protects the 2nd and 9th District and surrounding areas. Make sure you support the food trucks. We have food trucks over to my right. Uh, get your Sunday dinner. 
You know, don't, don't go home and cook now. Get your Sunday dinner from the food trucks. And we also have refreshments inside. We have a cake table, a cookie table. I would also like to thank Harry Lundberg School of Seamanship for, for, for providing us the desserts. Once again, thank you all for coming and spending our day with us on this very special occasion. Thank you.